Hi, Lisa Marie Kosis, founder of Global One Health. This video is a continuation in the shoulder series. I'm posting a few videos that target specific joint structures and addressing the anatomical structure and the ranges of motion in those specific joints. I started with the shoulder joint as it's the most mobile joint in the body. In the subsequent videos in these series, I'm going to talk about specific exercises that you can do to strengthen the muscle or muscle groups that affect that specific joint whether it be to stabilize or mobilize the joint. So in the first video, I talked about the lats as they are the prime movers and powerhouses of the shoulder joint in pulling motion. Uh, an example I did is the seated or kneeling pull down. Uh, similar activation of the muscle group is going to happen in a pull up, if that's something that you're training for. In this video, I'm going to talk about the rhomboids. One of the best exercises to strengthen the rhomboid muscle is the seated row or any kind of rowing motion. We're gonna do seated row here. So let me about face just to quickly review and point to the rhomboids as we're going to talk about them now. The rhomboids exist and are, are situated between the shoulder blades. So the prime movers of the scapula are the rhomboids in terms of retraction of the scapula. So when looking to strengthen the rhomboids, uh, so the best exercise probably that you could do to target that is going to be a row exercise. So when I activate my rhomboids, they pull the inferior sides of each of my shoulder blades towards my spine. So one of the best exercises, as I said, is going to be the row. Um, here I'm going to do it in a seated form. Uh, rows can be done in a few other positions. Bent over position is one example. Um, and I'll show a couple of the row examples of rowing exercises in future videos. For here, I'm going to use a monster band. If you don't have uh, a regular monster band and you have just a thorough band, you can use that as well. You would simply place the middle of the band in a seated variation around the middle or the arches of your feet, and you would hold each end of the band uh, in each hand. So I'm gonna face in a side profile view. I like to do the seated row um, as we do on the Pilates reformer. Uh, this is an actual exercise uh, that is done facing backwards on the reformer, holding the handles or the ropes. Uh, so we're gonna kind of mimic that here. Now I'm gonna be in a slightly leaned back position in this variation, although you can do it vertically as well. The reason I lean back is so that the line of pull of the band is in the same direction as my shoulders, um, angling upward towards the rhomboids. Now, um, in core, of course, when I'm doing strength training exercise, I want to be engaging my core, my pelvic floor, my TVA, which is my abdominal wall. So all that is engaged uh, without even questioning that, right? I want to pack my shoulders down. I talk very much about that. So I'm isometrically using my mid-low trapezius to keep my shoulders packed. A very important thing when rowing, you do not want to pull the arms back and have the shoulder joints elevate up to the ears. So that is not something you want to be doing. You want to be depressing the shoulder blades downward, packing the shoulders, especially as you get deeper into the row. So I'll show you from a side view uh, and then I'll possibly another angle as well. So I'm holding, I find the exact tension that I want of my band. I lean back just a little bit. The lean back is going to create a little bit more um, activation in the anterior or the front of your abdominal wall. Make sure that if you lean back, you're not looking forward. That puts a, a, a little bit of a break in the neck and the cervical spine. So as I lean back, I bring my entire trunk, including my skull back with me. When doing a row, you want to initiate the movement, not from the hands. So it's not about pulling back with the hands on the resistance or the arms bending. You want to initiate from the actual rhomboids themselves. So I initiate the retraction of my shoulder blades to bring my elbows back. So let's show you that from that back view. Right, I don't want to start the pull for my arms and you can see that there's nothing really happening right away in my rhomboid. So it should not look or feel like my elbows bend and then as an afterthought, I pull my shoulder blades together. That means that you're not pulling from the rhomboids initially and under heavy load, that's gonna put a little bit more load and stress on the joint structure of the shoulder joint um, instead of getting the power muscles of the back uh, to do the bulk of the work. So as soon as I start thinking about pulling, the very first thing that happens is my shoulder blades start to pull together. So I want, if it's a rhomboid driven exercise, the rhomboids to be the catalyst for the movement itself. 
So it's the engagement of the rhomboids that retracts my shoulder blades, which pulls my whole shoulder joint structure together. Now, if I isometrically hold this position, I'm trying to get as much squeeze together of my shoulder blades as possible, not allowing the elevation of the shoulders, right? So I'm retracting and depressing as much as I can to achieve that row movement. Now, from the side view, you want to think about what the angle of the arm is doing, meaning the humeral bone, the upper arm bone specifically. So when I go back, if I initiate, how far back should I pull is something that um, I address very frequently with clients. Now, if I'm pulling back and I go to my end range, meaning I bring my elbow back as far as it can go, what happens to the head of the upper arm bone, right? Watch what happens. As I bring my elbow all the way back, there's no place left to go but to kind of collapse forward at the other end of the humerus. So if I go to my end range back of my elbow, I'm almost forcing the humeral head to go forward and down. And as I mentioned in the lat pull down video, the more forward that my shoulder goes, the shoulder head, the arm head, there's no way I can be in retraction of my shoulder blades. Automatic activation or retraction of the shoulder blades pulls the shoulder joints back. If I excessively move my arm and elbow back, I'm forcing the humeral head forward. So at the end range, I'm going to lose rhomboid activation, which is kind of defeating the whole purpose of why you're doing these, which is to strengthen the rhomboids, activate them completely, but it also helps to re pull the shoulders joints back themselves. So if you sit at a desk and you round and collapse your spine and slouch, excessive slouching does generally lead to a forward rounding collapsing of the shoulder joint, which inhibits the ability to get your arms and overhead and certainly to get your shoulders back. And I see it on quite a lot of people that spend a significant amount of time sitting at their desk. So rhomboid activation is very important to help open up the anterior front of the shoulder joint capsule and open up the pec tissue, which can get shortened from slouching and the rounding forward of the shoulder joint structure. So it behooves me to really work on this exercise, but to do it properly. So again, don't allow those elbows to pass too far. The cue that I give my clients is, and for the most part, most people are not gonna, um, not necessary to allow the elbows to get much past the rib cage or the back side of the rib cage. Because once they do, that's when they're pretty much going too far and the shoulder collapse forward. Now, if you have a nice length of uh, flexibility in your pec tissue, and you can get the elbows behind the rib cage and still keep the shoulders back, go for it, but don't allow that to happen, right? It's so, so important that as you're retracting the blades and depressing the shoulders down and coming into this back position, that the shoulder joints are in their most back direction as you can possibly get them. Of course, the biceps are assisting, the rear delts are assisting the rowing action, but the rhomboids are the prime movers and the focus of any row position. So that is a seated row and I can certainly address some more exercise variations of rows, but I wanted to specifically target that in the shoulder series as the rhomboids directly affect the scapula and the whole shoulder girdle overall.